Hello everyone, this is Zuko from Timu, and we are about to watch the full trailer of the live-action Avatar The Last Airbender. Okay, let me explain this. I did this before in my teaser reaction, and I thought it was too light. Now I think I, I overdid it, but what can I do? It's already done. But yeah, the full trailer for the live action Avatar The Last Airbender has just been released. And if you've been watching my channel in the past couple of weeks, you know that I've been reacting to the One Piece live action on the road to the live action Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm a big fan of the Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon, like I said in my teaser trailer reaction. And I have high hopes for this, especially now that I've seen one Piece. Um, when I reacted to my to the teaser trailer, I have not yet seen One Piece, but now I have. It's a decent live action adaptation of a of an anime. So if they could do that with the live action after the Last Airbender, then I think we're good. Okay, so there's one thing I forgot to mention in my teaser trailer reaction: Zuko's scar. Um, Zuko's scar is supposed to announce itself. You know, it's supposed to wrap behind his ear and he is supposed to not have a left eyebrow and it's a huge part of his character's insecurity you know because there's two ways that people think of him if they do see him with a scar it's either they know that he's the banished prince or that he's a victim of the fire nation and either those things Zuko is not really proud of so I wish it was more pronounced because I've seen the stills and obviously we also saw Zuko in the teaser but for me, the scar is so tiny, like, because if you know how it happens, I don't know, the fire would not just focus on just one tiny spot on his face, you know, it would be like, like that. I, I think it's too late for them to fix it now because they're in post or they're already going to release this in, in a month's time. As for how I feel about Mike and Brian not being part of this, they were initially part of it but they parted ways due to apparently some creative differences. Now, I give Mike and Brian credit for having spearheaded Avatar The Last Airbender the cartoon because I did watch Avatar Spirits, the documentary about how they launched Avatar The Last Airbender as well as uh, their journey to the end. But did you know that they initially conceptualized this story as something sci-fi? Momo is supposed, was supposed to be a robot monkey. So I'm not sure how amazing Mike and Brian really are. I don't want to take credit away from them, but at the same time, you can't give them full credit because if you look at the writing credits of the After Our Last Airbender cartoon, for most of the episodes, Aaron E. Hans was the head writer for most of the episodes from books one through three. It was Aaron E. Hans. And curiously, he was not a part of the team in The Legend of Korra. And I've only seen The Legend of Korra once all the way through. The Legend of Korra is not it for me. Uh, I just was not a big fan of the spirit world in The Legend of Korra. There were too many decorative spirits for my liking. I think I'm sweating. Oh my. I think there were too many de decorative spirits. Random shapes, random colors. When in Avatar The Last Airbender, the spirits that we met had a function. You know, hey, by the spirit of the forest, the painted lady, the spirit of the lake, Ko, the face stealer, and then Wan Chi Tong, he who knows 10,000 things, and also the moon and the ocean spirits. They have a function, but in the Legend of Korra, the spirits that we met, I don't I don't even remember any except for Wan, Wan Chi Tong's reappearance. And then there was the talking meerkat, as well as a talking mushroom. That's all I remember when it comes to the spirit world in the Legend of Korra. There were great elements in The Legend of Korra, the great, great animation, great fight choreographies, some of the best villains in, in, in book 3, but just the characters and some of the lore just really did not do it for me. But you know, if you like The Legend of Korra, obviously to each their own, but my point is Aaron E. Has was not part of The Legend of Korra. And there must, that must be part of the reason why I did not like Legend of Korra. Yeah, so we should watch this now and talk later. I am a bit nervous. The Fire Nation is embarked on a dark path. And the world might never recover. The world needs the Avatar. Oh! <gasps> 
It needs you, Lang. Is that Susan? Why is he standing up? The Fire Nation has destroyed everything in their path. If the world is gonna have any chance, it's gonna need Aang. Oh my! There goes the savior of the world. He sounds exactly. I chased down every hint of the Avatar. It's my destiny. It's my destiny. I'm not someone who can stop the Fire Nation. Oh. I don't want the responsibility. You don't have to do this alone. You have me, Tara, and a flying ball of fur. What more do you need? <laughs> oh, June. Remember, what was he by? Really fighting for oh. the ones we. We're gonna have to rewatch this. I'm the Avatar, and I'm gonna save the world. <laughs> he sounds so With my young. Friends. That was Jet. Oh my gosh. We have to watch that again. They really had a shuk chuk 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 The Fire Nation is embarked on a dark path. And the world might never recover. The world So this is must be one of the air temples then. The invasion. It needs you, Lang. Our nation has destroyed everything in their path. If the world is gonna have any chance, it's gonna need Aang. Right. There goes the savior of the world. He sounds exactly like Sokka from the cartoon. I chased down every hint of the Avatar. It's my destiny. Not someone who can stop the Fire Nation. I don't want the responsibility. The Fire Lord is ripped. You don't have to do this alone. You have me, Tara, and a flying ball of fur. What more do you need? <laughs> oh, the sheer shoe. The world needs you. Remember what it is we're really fighting for. The ones. We love. I'm the Avatar, and I'm gonna save the world. With my friends. Apple looks kinda small. Well, I like what I just saw. Um, I was worried a bit about, what's his name, Ken Lung, who plays Zhao. I was worried about him when they announced that he was going to be playing Zhao because Zhao is supposed to be intimidating and that was one of the sins in Shaman's The Last Airbender was that Zhao was not intimidating, he was Weasley. And here, it does seem like he has a bit of presence, uh, like an intimidating presence from the little that we saw. 
But oh yeah, people have an issue with Aang being so young and then Katara being a bit older, you know, physically. And people seem to be so obsessed with them getting together when that never happened in the car in the cartoon until the very end. So I really don't see the issue. I don't see the issue there. Like Aang could still have a crush on Katara, but they don't have to be together and it doesn't have to be weird a kid can have a crush on someone older and i don't know just don't make it weird because after the last airbender was never about them being together there was a part in the cartoon where ang refused to let go of his attachment to katara but that could mean a lot of things i just hope people don't obsess over that because this story is not really about their love it only started having at the very very end so Please don't obsess about that aspect. Give the show a shot. Sokka sounds exactly like he did in the cartoon. <laughs> in the cartoon. I wish we saw more of Asula. I really want to pause every single uh, frame, but I don't know if maybe I should. This is at the forest. This is the air temple, I think, when they ambushed the air nomads and Aang was no longer around. He was already frozen underwater at this point and that's why the Fire Nation was able to do this in the first place. But that was Fire Lord Sozin? Oh, so it is Sozin, it must be. For some reason he kind of resembles a fire sage because of his um, headpiece or helmet. Why is he standing here? Oh, I think he was also standing in the cartoon actually. And then he fell. Here's Azula with the arrow, bow and arrow. If they have done anything new in this, I don't wanna like overanalyze every scene of the trailer. It's the air scooter. I don't think we've heard anything from Iroh yet. Appa is realistically muddy. They actually have June in this. Bumi looks kind of off, if I'm being honest. I'm really glad that they have. They seem to have all the music from the cartoon in this, like the. No. For me personally, I think Boomy looks a bit off. Maybe because he looks so small. I don't know. I just ima kind of imagine. It. Obviously, it's live action, so you can only do so much with live action. But for some reason, he just look looks really small in that shot. But I don't know, I don't really mind it, you know, for as long as the characterization is on point. But I guess, I guess we'll see. So, that was it. That was the official trailer for Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm definitely going to be reacting to this. So, if you want to watch that with me, please subscribe. Right now, I'm, um, I'm still releasing videos for the live action One Piece. But yeah, yeah, I think that's basically it. So let me know your thoughts on what, we, what we've seen so far of Avatar The Last Airbender live action. I think that's it. If you like this video, please give a like, comment, and subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get notifications on new uploads. This has been Lipwrecked. See you next video.